What? Quasimodo couldn't believe his ears. Right now, Esmeralda's eyes shone brightly. Leave this place. Oh, but Frollo would be so upset, said Quasimodo. No, no. This is where I belong. Esmeralda could see he'd made up his mind. All right, then. I'll come to see you. Here, asked Quasimodo, surprised. What's about the soldiers and Frollo? I'll sneak in after sunset, Esmeralda said. She kissed him on the cheek and Quasimodo blushed bright red. Esmeralda took off her necklace. Here, she said. Use this if you ever need a safe place. It will show you the way to the Court of Miracles. The fuddling sound of heavy boots rounded the corner. Soldiers, whispered Quasimodo. Hurry, you've got to go. He helped Esmeralda down the ground, then he handled the shawl on her. He waited until they were out of sight, then smiling to himself, Quasimodo turned and began the long climb back up. Notre Dame. He was reached to the, the top and had reached down and pulled him onto the parade. It was Phoebus, and I'm looking for the gypsy girl, he said. Have you seen her? Quasimodo was so furious he could hardly speak. He longed to for the captain. Get out, he shouted. He pulled a torch from the wall to begin to swing it. No soldiers sanitary, startled Phoebus back, called down the steps. Wait, he said. I meant no harm. All I want is got to... Quasimodo would listen. Go! He swung the torch widely in front of him. Phoebus drew his sword and trapped the torch against the wall. You must give her a message from me, Phoebus said. Tell her I didn't mean to trap her here, but it was only way I could save her life. Will you tell her that? I will give... You go now, Quasimodo answered. All right, said Phoebus. He turned to leave, then stopped. One more thing, he said. Tell Esmeralda she's very lucky, lucky to have a friend like you. Just go, said Quasimodo. Then he thought for a moment af about what Phoebus had said. A smile lit up his face. He proudly puffed out of his chest and marched into the bell tower. The gargoyle greeted him with, Shouts and congratulations. Well done, Victor proclaimed. You jetted that tin plated but foods with great panache. The nerve of him snooping around here trying to steal young girl, said Hugo. Quasimodo's mouth dropped open. My girl, you remember dark hair works with a goat, Laverne reminded him. Way to go, lover boy, explained Hugo. L -l lover boy, stammered Quasimodo, not me. Don't be so modest, said Laverne. Look, it's nice, and you want help, Quasimodo told his friends. But I have the ugliest face in all of Paris, remember? He walked away. I'll have to ring the bells for vespers. From the dark, chilly tower, the bells called the people to the evening prayer. As Quasimodo pulled the ropes, the past hours drifted through his head. He gazed out at the dark, flowing river. Two lovers walked hand on hand along its bank. He'd seen the same sight so many times, but he never dreamed of the moment he could share the happiness of love. But now... As it formed heaven, Esmeralda, one who didn't see its ugliness, had come into his life. Is it impossible? He asked himself that she might really care for someone like me. Quasimodo went inside and picked up a piece of wood and his knife. Definitely he carved his little figure. It was of Esmeralda. He placed his... In her in his miniature town next to the model of himself in the centre of the open square. At midnight, a light of the still in turning in the Palace of Justice, Frollo, his grey head bowed, kneeled in prayer. Help me, he pleaded. You know I'm so much better. 
Now, I'm common people, but the gypsy woman as mother is tempting me. Guilt and shame should not be mine, for I am righteous man. Please, I beg, I do not let me fall under the witch's spell. In anguish, Frollo felt silent, struggling to find an answer. Maybe it is God's will. He fought it at last. For me, I show her the way of righteousness. Raising his head, he swore aloud, and if she will not be mine and mine alone, she must face the fires of Davishness. There was a knock at the door. Minister Frollo, a guard informed him. The gypsy has escaped. What? Frollo didn't want to believe it. How? She's nowhere in the cathedral, sir, the guard said. She's gone. Frollo stormed around his chamber, pounding his fist into his hand. I'll find her, I'll find her, if I have to burn down all of Paris.